Meet gluten. I'm sure by now you are well acquainted with the food who quickly rose up the success ladder as one of the most famous edible materials in all of history. But as time has gone on, his stardom came with a price, and in recent years he has become endlessly argued about and even hated in the celebrity food world. Many of his opposers protest the little guy by detailing the negative influence he's had on our diets, whilst his fans accuse those adversaries as merely following yet another diet fashion trend. But hold on a moment. Does anyone even know what gluten is? Well, gluten came from humble farm beginnings. It was his job to feed protein to the embryo of any fertilized grain until the unborn seed baby was ready to burst out of its shell and start its journey into parenthood. When humans first discovered gluten over 10,000 years ago, it was love at first sight, and we put the fella to immediate work. He throws breads and cakes into a fluffy, chewy texture, whilst stapling together our pastas, cereals, and beers. And in turn, we made him a star, a household name in all of our favorite cookbooks, in fact, we adored him so much that we even named him after the Latin word for glue, as he's consistently held our diets <laughs> and affection firmly intact. But in the last few decades, gluten's once cherished status has fallen, as people have grown intolerant to his behavior. Recent studies compared frozen blood samples from the 1950s and they discovered that gluten sensitivity is four times more common today than it was back then. And it's estimated that one in 133 people are bothered by him worldwide, as opposed to only one in 2,500 a decade ago. To understand what this means, let's look at the intestines of our ancestors. As you can see, ancient stomachs were very hospitable and cooperated with gluten just like any other form of happy nutrients. He got eaten, shook hands with the regular digestion process, and submissively broke down to be distributed to all the parts of the body summoning his services. But the trouble started when gluten's popularity went to his head. He began to feel quite comfortable within certain intestines and set up home, overstaying his welcome and refusing to follow the classic digestion script. <laughs> well, naturally, this stubborn visitor annoyed the guts so much that they set off the alarm to evict our gooey guest. A war was declared. The body's natural defenses moved into attack. The stomach turned into a battlefield, and an uncomfortable reaction was developed, leaving certain human hosts feeling nauseous, congested, and, well, highly irritable all over. However, for some, the complications from this tummy fight may take a much more severe turn when the mother immune system becomes so furious with the stomach's constant distress calls that she decides enough is enough and goes into a blind rage, blasting the entire scene without restraint in an attempt to eradicate the problem by any means necessary. This careless, abnormal immune response unbiasedly zaps all proteins alike, and the nutrient rations are left so scarce that our organs and joints cannot receive their regular health package. And the consequences of this can be devastating, Side effects may include constipation, fatigue, rashes, depression, migraines, cancer, arthritis, schizophrenia, dementia, and even death. Which is why the solution seems so simple. Get rid of gluten entirely. The war is won, the gut society finds peace once again, and the land is restored back to its harmonious ways. Which sounds all fine and good, but it still doesn't explain what exactly happened back there? If we've been eating gluten for so many thousands of years, why has this fruitful partnership turned sour only now? And the unfortunate truth is, nobody really knows. We do have plenty of theories, though. For starters, modern wheat is not what it used to be. 
thanks to new farming techniques of genetically breeding different plants together, the proportion of gluten in our current crops has mutated substantially, and the modern accelerated process that follows is also somewhat worrying. Firstly, in order to help the flower last much longer, the farmers kicked out the vitamin-loaded reproductive parts of the plant. Secondly, our bread used to be fermented, functioning as a thriving home for neighborly bacteria. But raising a healthy colony of microorganisms was deemed too time-consuming, and so they got fired too. And finally, up until the 19th century, our wheat was mixed with other grains, beans and nuts. But for whatever money-making purpose, this idea has also since been scrapped. All of which results in a refined wheat flour that's only existed for 200 years, feeding the planet more gluten than ever before, with much less of the previous natural gluten defenses included. However, there is another theory which suggests that gluten itself should not carry all the blame. Rather, our modern-day excess of sugar, alcohol, antibiotics, pollution, and genetically modified foods are the true culprits here, disrupting our intestinal flora until we can no longer accommodate our old pal gluten anymore. This argument proposes that some people who have been independently researching their symptoms may remove the scapegoat gluten from their diets and indeed feel much better. This leads them to conclude they must have a gluten intolerance without actually seeking any real medical diagnosis for what may be a deeper issue. But no matter which side of the picket fence you're on, the simple fact of the matter is that we as a society should all consider some restraint when it comes to our entire dieting regime, which definitely includes gluten. Fast food deliveries to our door with a click of a button, mass-produced meats flooding our supermarkets, quick pharmaceutical fixes to alleviate any bothersome symptoms, thoughts condensed into 140 characters. Oh, we are living in a world where demand is bigger than ever and nothing is fast enough. All too often we may find ourselves jumping to conclusions without stopping to do any research and talking about things without knowing what we are actually talking about. As a suggestion, perhaps we should all just slow down and even consider ourselves responsible for what has happened to poor Gluten's career, hesitating before pointing fingers at something that is, at the end of the day, a simple gloop of protein. If you need to puff out your bread into an attractive shape or build a cake higher than your neighbors, then he's the man for the job. But gluten can only be gluten, and we really shouldn't be expecting our food to think for us. Did you enjoy that episode? Press the like button if you did. Want to see more? What if you clicked subscribe? Oh, and make sure you click on the little bell so you don't miss another video ever again. In fact, we've got a new one coming out every week. Prepare your mind for more tantalizing hypotheticals.